Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for joining me for my weekly guitar blog. It's March 29th, 2015. This week we're going to run through a lesson covering jazz blues for dummies. And this week's question was sent in from Richard. He's out in Los Angeles and he wrote in with this email. When my jazz band teacher asked me to go up to the front of the room and play a blues progression, I went. But when I played what I thought was a blues, he started to laugh and said, no, that's not a blues progression. He said, later I need to learn how to play the jazz blues changes. Can you make an easy lesson for this? Something kind of like a jazz blues for dummies. From Richard in Los Angeles, California, USA. Well, thanks for writing in, Richard. It won't be very difficult to create a basic jazz blues progression for you to practice and study. I can also make it with a set of common chords to be able to play it down in the easiest possible way. There are, however, a couple of points to keep in mind with these groups of chord changes. One is that the chord progressions are often changed song to song. In other words, there's a lot of different versions of the jazz blues progression out there, and uh, they tend to use more jazz harmony principles that uh, will apply uh, passing chords and substitutions and those kinds of situations. So it's important to get your music theory together as time goes on to really be able to do this stuff properly. And it's important to understand learning one jazz blues progression does not mean that you've learned them all by any stretch. So to get started, let's run through an overview of what our 12 bar jazz blues progression will be like. Well, before we head to the guitar and begin jamming out on some chords and some ways that we can apply those chords into this uh, progression here, I wanted to just break the progression down real quick. It's a rather interesting set, uh, setup that I have here through this uh, jazz blues in E. And um, mind you, there are lots of different ways that you could perform a jazz blues. This is just one interpretation, but you will see many different concepts that are out there. Now, what I've done in this particular version is uh, it's in the key of E, obviously. Obviously. Uh, we're starting on that root chord, moving to the four chord in the next measure, and then we have uh, the third and fourth measures, we're back on the root chord again. On the fifth and sixth measures, we're back on the four chord once again. And up till that point, we've pretty much just played a standard blues progression from a standard you know, blues 12 bar. Now at that uh, point, when we finish the sixth measure and we're heading into measure seven and eight we start into our first touch of what it's like to start entering these jazz blues changes now we have this chromatic drop down here starting from the one chord going down a half step down another half step and then down another half step here to c sharp dominant seventh which is a five of the upcoming measure so when we come along here into measure 9 and we begin into the turnaround going measures 9, 10, 11, and 12. This uh, ninth measure has a 2 chord and then a 5 chord on the B7 here taking us back to the root of the key that we're operating within uh, this E dominant 7th. So it's a really interesting sound here because this is something that you would find much more commonly in a, a traditional jazz number. This 2, 5, 7, 1 that takes us over into this chord. Now granted this is is not a major seven chord, which is what we typically find in a jazz number. It's a dominant seventh, so it's a different quality, but it still sets up the same effect. So we get this two five progression coming back around here into the one chord of this particular set of changes, and then we just simply do that two five one more time, which shoots us right back to the top here, and we can start the progression again. So basically, this is kind of a 50 50 progression. Half of it is a traditional blues 12 bar format. The other half of it is really venturing more off into the world of what we would see in the harmony of jazz music. So <clears throat> what we're going to do next is we're going to head to the guitar, learn some chord shapes that you can apply uh, into this uh, set of changes, and then we're going to go through each line of the progression so you can learn it and uh, get it all squared away. So let's head to the guitar next. Let's get started with learning a small group of chord patterns that can be applied across the entire jazz blues progression. We'll learn two shapes for dominant seventh that we'll use for the majority of the changes. Uh, one shape uh, off the fifth string and another uh, off of the uh, sixth string. Um, plus, to cover the two, five, one turnaround, we're also going to learn a shape uh, for the minor seventh chord as well. So we're gonna organize these shapes simply as shape one, shape two, and shape three. 
And here's how they get established on the guitar. Shape one is a fifth string root chord. It's uh, built from the uh, fifth string going to the fourth with the uh, ring finger going to the middle finger. Small finger or fourth finger comes up next after that. And then we have the index up on the second string. So it's a chord shape that's really focused on the four inside guitar strings and a real straightforward shape to make, no barring required, fairly easy. That's shape one. Uh, moving on to shape two, we're going to be doing that as a bar chord. If you're not familiar with bar chords, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to get down. It's an all six string bar, and we're catching uh, sixth, fourth, second, and first with that finger. On the fifth and the third strings, we're using the ring and the middle fingers pressed down just like so, whole step above that uh, position, and then a half step above with that middle finger on third string. That's gonna be called shape two. That is a dominant chord as well. So those first two, both dominant chords, one off fifth string, one off sixth. Now we're gonna to move to shape three, which is a minor seven chord. Now now this minor seven chord is the same general layout that we had for that a uh, a seventh or the six string root chord the six string root dominant down there um, the uh, next one up that we're doing here this one is off fifth string root and we're doing it as a bar we have ring finger and middle finger taking care of the notes on the fourth guitar string and on the second guitar string and you could bar right across if you want to. So if you do want to get the high first guitar string, you can get that in there. If you don't, it's also sounding really good to just play it on the four inside strings as well. So that's shape three, minor seven shape. So those are the three shapes. And next, let's apply these various chord shapes into the different measures of the 12 bar blues progression. Now, starting from measure one, we'll apply shape one off the fifth string, fifth position. Remember, position refers to the location of your index finger. I know the root of E is off seventh fret down there, but the actual position is technically fifth position. So that's going to occur for uh, measure one, and that's uh, an E dominant seventh chord. In measure two, we'll want to switch to shape two, built with the root off of the sixth guitar string. That's that bar chord in fifth position, creating the A dominant seventh chord. Then in measures three and four, we'll switch back to using shape one again to cover that E seventh chord. Those four bars are just gonna go by like this, E seven, A seven, and then two bars of E seven. All right, let's move on. Uh, in measures five and six, we'll switch back to the six string root A, seventh chord, fifth position, played using shape two. Now in measures seven and eight though, we're gonna have an interesting chromatic line dropping from the root chord of E seventh all the way down to C sharp dominant seventh. And that chromatic idea can be easily performed with the fifth string root pattern of shape one. Sounds like this. dropping right down chromatically there are all those uh, four chord shapes one two three four right down the neck all right let's keep going now in the final line of our basic uh, 12 bar blues progression here we're going to encounter the turnaround ideas these are going to be taken straight from the traditional jazz they're the two five one progression turnarounds and there this one here is just going to be functioning in the into the root of e once again so uh, in those last four bars we're going to start off with the f sharp minor seven chord and that's going to be covered performing it with sh the chord shape number three so that's the minor seven shape it's built off the fifth string in ninth position for that f sharp minor seven in the next measure we have b dominant seventh chord that's back again into the bar chord idea this time moving that shape two remember before we played it off a we're just sliding up here playing it off seventh position so again shape two for that b dominant seventh so shape three for the f sharp shape uh, two for that b dominant seventh chord and uh, that's uh, six string root seventh position and uh, then what we're going to do is come back around again to the e seventh in that uh, 11th measure of the progression and that e seventh chord is just shape one once again and in the last measure of the progression we have the two five turnaround performed in that final measure it's coming by uh, you know you pretty fast here taking you back to the top so uh, I'm, gonna I'm just going to play through the uh, wrap up here, bars 9, 10, 11, and 12, just to give you a taste of how those go by. Here we go. So 
that finishes off all of the uh, measures now. What I'm going to do next is just take it from the top and I'm going to play the whole thing down a couple passes for you so you can get a really good idea of how all this stuff comes together. Here we go. So I just did a little tag ending there if you were wondering what was going on at the end. I was just tagging those last couple bars of E7 and then the F sharp minor, B dominant, E7, and again, turned it into an ending. All right, and that is your 12-bar uh, jazz blues progression for dummies. <laughs> Well, you know, memorizing a few of these jazz blues progressions can be really helpful. They not only follow the really common layouts found in traditional 12-bar blues progressions, but they also introduce certain popular jazz situations that are incredibly beneficial to learn about, to know chord patterns for, and to become very familiar with. For when that inevitable day finally comes where someone eventually throws a set of jazz changes in front of you and expects you to play them down. You play guitar long enough that will happen to you at some point. The best part is that these chord changes are not terribly difficult to learn and they can generally be developed with a small amount of work. Anyway, that's about all the time I have for today. As always, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great week and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now. If you're interested in learning faster, making better use of your time and practicing longer, the Accelerating Your Learning Curve ebook is for you. Over 60 pages of information on how to take control of both the way you learn and the time that you devote to your practicing. Accelerating Your Learning Curve is available for instant download in the View Our Products area at creativeguitarstudio.com.